which, in turn, can increase erosion corrosion. This can also occur on the outside of tubes. An incorrectly designed baffle to deflect hot products led to these streaming through the narrow gap between tube and support. In cooling tubes, erosion corrosion does not usually occur along the whole length of the tube, but at the inlet where turbulence occurs. So, for economy, protective inserts are used, which, when eroded, may be replaced at shutdown. The period between maintenance is doubled, and with new inserts, the life of tubes prolonged for many years. We have seen that when metals are placed in an electrolyte, such as seawater or wet earth, each of them may corrode. However, when the two dissimilar metals are brought into direct contact with each other and immersed in an electrolyte, the corrosion of the steel will be accelerated. But at the same time, the copper will have been protected. This reaction is turned to advantage in cathodic protection, used, for example, on underground pipes and ships. On its own, the steel hull would corrode in seawater where paint had been damaged. So, zinc blocks are fitted in good electrical contact with the steel. The steel is protected and the zinc corrodes. With zinc blocks fitted in the right places, the hull remains intact as long as the zinc is replaced regularly. In an electrolyte, metals have an order in which, in electrical contact, they will become either the anode or cathode to each other. This is the electrochemical series. It also includes certain non-metals, such as carbon. When in contact with copper, a metal higher in the series, iron, is corroded. Similarly, when iron is in contact with aluminium, lowered in the series, the iron is protected and the aluminium corrodes. In choosing associated metals, the designer must be aware that an incorrect choice can lead to destructive corrosion. Aluminium was chosen to give a light yet strong bridge without the need for painting. But the aluminium girders were fastened by steel rivets. This proved to be an incorrect decision. For where moisture collects, bimetallic corrosion is destroying the bridge. So strengthening has been needed. Bolts of a compatible material, or plated bolts, should have been chosen. The steel shell of a heat exchanger not only has to withstand normal corrosion, but also aggressive bimetallic corrosion from coupling with the copper tubes. This is overcome by placing the steel in direct contact with zinc, lower in the electrochemical series so that both steel and copper are protected at the expense of the zinc. Similarly, on end plates, the zinc is sacrificial and replaced at normal maintenance periods. Where possible, further protection comes from an insulating coat of paint. In all industry, some 60% of failures which occur from corrosion are due to errors in design. The designer should bear in mind 
the effect upon corrosion of shape. The problems where failure comes from stress-assisted corrosion. The need to avoid crevices which lead to corrosion. The flow of liquids and corrosion by erosion. And bimetallic corrosion from incompatible metals. When all these factors are considered in relation to the economics, the lifespan and the practical use, then there can be prevention of corrosion. Prevention of corrosion at the drawing board by good design.